Sam, also, it's a, it's a pleasure to speak to you on Coach Milovan Rajevac. Uh, he comes in as a second spell. First off, uh, what were initial impressions when you heard the news that he is coming back as the Black Stars coach? I think when I heard it, uh, uh, I, was, I was happy, to be honest. When I heard that uh, um, the FA is talking to Milovan, I was really happy because in my head, I say they are doing the right thing. You know, they are they are doing the they are making the right decision to bring him back. I was so happy when I heard it. Um, when you say the right decision, what what do you mean by you know making the right decision? You know, uh, I would just put it in this way that you know our blasters team. Yes, I'm not saying that the coaches were, uh, before were no good coaches. You understand, but. The team that we have, we need we need a disciplined coach. I will not say previous ones are no disciplined. You understand what I mean? But we need we need coaches that uh, they can control in the dressing room as well. And uh, I, I, that is why I'm saying that the, I, I was really happy when I heard that the FA was talking to him because I don't the day. He know what he, he know what he want to be honest. Well, d- definitely he's one coach who knows what he wants. But let's talk about your personal experience with Milo. Do you remember the first time you met him, and what was the interaction between the two of you like? I think it was amazing. You know, uh, young player. Uh, he came to me. He was talking to me that I have the potential. I just have to stay focused, work hard, and. Uh, I will have my chance, you know. And he's one of he's a coach that I like so much because he he doesn't prepare his team based on names. You understand what I mean? He prepares his team based on whoever who wants to show that he's ready to play. That is one thing I like about him. And he's a coach that he always wants to win in dressing room. And if I'm not wrong, you know that in this kind of job that we are doing. If you if you win the locker room, I think to be honest, for sure, hundred percent that you are going to win every single game. But what type of coach is is, is Milo? How does he come across to his players? Uh, for me, he's he's um, it's not only on the pitch, outside the pitch as well. He care about the players. He check maybe if some player have a problem, maybe wife problem or you understand family problem or something like that and and that's that that makes him a proper manager for you personally he gave you a chance after your exploits with the under 20 you know going to africa conquering africa and then conquering the world so being a young player at that point how did it feel like having the manager's trust especially at the big stage of the national team that is why that is why I'm describing him the kind of manager he is. You understand what I mean? When when he comes about national team in our national team, Ghana national team, before we were basing on the names. You understand what I mean? But when he came, he also gave we young players chance that come on. If you show me on training, you are going to play. But in terms of communication, we've seen him use a translator even recently when he was reappointed. How was the communication barrier like? Did you have to go through a translator or there were some times where he could understand basic English and uh, what was it like? No, he, he always come with the, the translator. He always, even if he want to speak to you on his, uh, in his room or come into your room, he always bring him to, for you to understand what, what he's talking about. You understand what I mean? As for English, he understands basic, like good morning, you know, how are you? This is normal for every every human being. You understand what I mean? But if he really wants you to understand what he wants, the philosophy he wants you to be on the page, he always comes with the, the translator. So take me through what the experience is like when you report to training and what he usually expects from the players. Uh, is he a type of coach that demands a lot? And is he, is he quite... Uh, tight on players and or you see the very soft calm guy how is Milo like especially at the training grounds Milovan for me I would just put that Milovan is a is such a lovely man 
But when it comes about the work, it's different. He doesn't want anybody to make any decision. You understand? As for his work, he controls, he's in charge, he's his own boss. You understand? Milovan is more disciplined as well. Training time, when he says six, you have to be there six. When you are there six, one, you will never train. So that tells you how he understands his job. This tells you how he wants to win. And if you are talking about all this kind of thing, that will let you win a game. Especially if I'm late 20 minutes, other players late 40 minutes, five minutes. How can the team, team you never have a teamwork. But he's a man that when he tells you sleep, you have to. If you don't sleep and he finds out, you'll be under punishment. Let's just wrap up on, you know, the history and uh, the first spell with Milo. Uh, if my memory serves me right, you played about 15 games under him. Uh, that was the eighth highest by any Ghanaian at that point. So there was that trust between Milo and you. What would you call us your, refer to as your best moment under Milo Van Rijevac in those 15 games that you played? I think I enjoyed every single minute that he gave me when he came to the Blasters, to be honest. I enjoyed it because um, a coach coming to you, giving you confidence, it, it's even happening in such a way that I, I, if, I, if I remember Ghana against US, uh, US in the World Cup, which was 2010, he took me to press conference. And if you, can, if you know, we have also like names like Apia, John, and everybody was there. But he took me to press conference and he told me that, come on, I believe in you and I know you do it. He didn't know. I didn't know anything about it. And when he even, when they even came to my room, I think he sent Alessa Asante. When they even came to my room and they said, I'm the one going to press conference, I was even looking at my back. Is that me? Well, that was great because eventually uh, Ghana qualified to the next round to face Uruguay. Interestingly, in that match, Andre Ayu was suspended. He moved you up from right back to right wing back and uh, no, right midfield, actually. You played as a winger in that game, if I do remember quite correctly. How was yeah. the experience like? Uh, did he communicate that to you earlier? Did you work in training as a winger, or was it something that you were told just minutes before kickoff? No, it was uh, something that he was talking to me about because he was telling me how he's building the game plan because he said to us that we have to do more pressure, you know, more pressing, you know. So he needs some 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 player like me to do more. Uh, pressing, you know, so he spoke to me and um, a, a day, a two days before the game, I was training the same thing in the training grounds. I was playing like a right wing. Yeah, unfortunately, Ghana's journey in the World Cup ended that game. What, what do you remember from the dressing room uh, with the manner which Ghana got knocked out? Do you remember some of the words, what the mood was like and what Milo was saying to the team when, you know, we got knocked out by Uruguay? Yes, I think he, he, he carried all the blame and uh, he didn't blame no one. He spoke very good to every, every single player in the local room. And uh, he was also telling us that, uh, listen, this is even life in general is like that. Sometimes you'll be down, sometimes you'll be up. So when you are down, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't think that, your your life is you and your life is over. So he spoke a lot of encouragement words to everyone, and um, everyone was okay. At the end of the day, we 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 as players we know, and he also know as coach that he want to do more. You understand? We wanted to also do more for our nation, and uh, also as players, you know, the value of us will be also up. But at the end of the day, we don't blame no one. We are a team that we lose together, we win together. So this is this kind of words that he said to everyone. We win together, we lose together, we are not going to blame no, no one. So as a manager talking like that tells you that he's, he's, he, he's the boss. You understand what I mean? 